Welcome back. Welcome back to SketchUp Unfolding and how to make a pattern for laser cutting. So let's get into SketchUp here. We need to first download the extension. So we go to Window, Extension Warehouse. And we're looking for Unwrap. Unwrap and flatten faces. It's free. It's really good. It's been around for some time. Over 400,000 people have used it. So it's not going to be a bug or a glitch. There are instructions here. There are tutorials on YouTube, like you saw. And you just hit install. Bing, bada, boom. You got it. It's really useful. I already have it installed. It'll put it into, uh, automatically into your extensions folder. On rare occasions, you may have to log out of SketchUp and log back in to make it available. Maybe not. And you're going to find it under Tools. Then you scroll down, and there it is, Unflattened Faces. All right, so I got it. Let's get that dodecahedron back. The one we had was not very good. Uh, let's get the dodecahedron done by Mr. Dodecahedron. He sounds like he knows what he's doing. Okay, let's download this into our model. Okay. There it is. How big is this thing? Eight feet. No, 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 no. We needed about eight inches, right? So let's shrink this puppy. Move it to our axes. I'm going to zoom in and just take a look and see what we got for the dimension. Uh, a little over 12 inches. That's doable. Let's shrink it a little smaller. If you have a precise dimension in mind, you can do the math by uh, taking um, the dimension you want it to be, divided by the dimension in measures, to arrive at the percentage of reduction. Okay. Yeah, 11 inches. That's nice. That's a nice size. Okay. So if you noticed, we've got bounding, a bounding box that uh, extends of our dimensions. That means it's a group or a component. You need to explode it for, in order to unwrap it. So we go to edit, and it is. It's a component. Explode. Click off, click on, click on. Okay, there's no other groups or components in this puppy, unlike the last one. So this is good. So Command A, select all, lasso all. Watch this, people. This is, this is the fun part. We go to Tools. Tools, 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 and wrap, and wrap, and wrap, and wrap. It's going to do its best. And what we're looking for here is that all 12 faces 
12 out of 12 are unwrapped. Cool. Job is done. It's on the Z axis, which is cool. That's where we want it. So let's get rid of our dodecahedron. No longer need a dodecahedron. Let's look at this from above. Top. There we go. Beautiful. This has reduced that complex geometry into the most practical pattern, in essence, creating the fewest edges to be glued. Where coplanar pieces can be folded. So when I take this into Illustrator, I'll make those folding edges blue. When it's unfolded, it's a group of components, so we need to explode that. Edit, group, explode. There we go. And each one is independent. Cool. So in Illustrator, what I'm referring to as fold lines are these. These are lines that would be scored by a laser cutter, scored enough that I can just fold it. Cool. The other lines I would turn into red lines in Illustrator. 255 red, zero blue, zero green. Cool, cool, cool. So I can make my designs on this. I could design one face, make it a group, then copy and paste it into my other 12 faces. I'll apply the proper colors in Illustrator. And that's how we arrive at uh, the pattern for the laser cutter. In order to make the model in SketchUp, you'd have to give it a thickness. You know, if you're using eighth inch chipboard, I would then extrude up your pattern each an eighth of an inch. Not a lot, but if when we build our model in SketchUp, it should have the true material thickness. So the easiest thing to do is extrude one specifically and then match them by extrud extruding up and aligning with the previously extruded piece. So that's that, folks. But Let's say we have some other design in mind. This is something I made that's triangular at the bottom. Comes up and then takes on different angles to slice the top of it. And I have taken away the the top, so that's empty. So that's a hole. I've taken away the triangle that was in there and the triangle that was at the base. So it's just the shell. So we need to just have a shell. All right. All right. So, okay. So even with this shape, complex shape, I'm going to again unfold it. And maybe I put the designs on after I unfold it. It's probably the smartest. So select all. Tools. Unwrap. Okay. And let's see what it says. Six out of six. Okay, cool. Looks like we got it. 
Looks like we got it there. All right. I love it when it works. It's a group. I might pull it away. And delete my shape. So let's look at this together from the top. Camera standard top. Pretty cool. So the bottom three facets include with one seam and the top three facets folded and glued with one seam. Now let's talk about that for a second. We can glue the seams, but that tends to be a little sloppy. Let's go ahead and give it some facets or some flaps so that this edge can glue to the back of that face. All right, I think I know what to do. First, let's undo this. Edit, group, edit, ungroup, or explode. Cool. So I kind of want to draw from the top view. Let's go ahead and even do, do that um, parallel projection camera standard top. Okay. I'm going to make a tab. Let's say, I'm going to make that a quarter of an inch. So this tab is a quarter inch wide, parallel to the edge. There it goes. I got a tab. So this line, I would make blue in Illustrator as a score line. And the edges of the tab, red. Let's do a couple more so we get, this, get our head around this. Let's go out. Oh, here. Can't we just. No. Let's, let's do the same thing. We don't go straight out, we usually go in a little bit. So I drew it randomly, and I'm going to put in a quarter of an inch. Put a line parallel. We do that by hovering over. And it becomes magenta, because they're parallel. And then come in a little bit. Thing, bada bing, there's a flap. And another flap. Come randomly. And then I might put in a quarter of an inch. These angles don't have to be a pure 45. So, but it could be There's another flap. Not as wide as that flap. Maybe I should have made a match. But let's keep on going. We just need so this flap, this flap would glue to the back of that plane. And this flap would glue to the back of that plane. These two planes are hinged together. And that flap would glue to the back of that plane. We just need one more flap. And yeah. 
We, we don't want to be parallel because then we might see the flat. So uh, it should kind of fold in a little. So let's uh, make that approximately a quarter of an inch. Draw a line parallel by hovering over, getting it to be magenta, holding down the shift. And so if you take a look at that, that flap would be behind this plane here. Leaving the bottom open, the top opened. Uh, it might be a pendant. It might sit on a table. I would assign my lines in Illustrator because that's what we use. Um, other labs might accept AutoCAD or some other file. FIT, the universal amongst the departments, is Illustrator. But we could do our vectors here in SketchUp, or if you're good, I, I recommend SketchUp because I'm able to unfold. That's my logic. Uh, if I were to calculate all the geometry, I could do it straight in Illustrator and just draw the lines, blue and red, as uh, they need to be. But I'm going to maybe add my design at this point. Maybe my name on here, maybe circles, maybe lines, maybe faces, maybe Santa Claus, maybe reindeers, maybe, maybe, maybe. And so what I want cut, again, is red. And what I want left as a pattern, blue in Illustrator. So I know it's two pieces of software, but most things are built with multiple softwares. This should not be a surprise. All right, all right. So that's SketchUp, Unfold, and Unwrap. Next part would be Illustrator. So I take this, and because I'm in the SketchUp Pro, I could do File, Export, 2D Graphic. and select the place to put it. And your options are bada bing, bada boom. And hit BWG. All right, we got it for all wrapped up. Thank you. Be good.